Hi, good evening everybody. Welcome to a Zen Z Next Guidebook, uh, the first podcast. We are happy to have uh, Mr. Sohail Ahmed, Vice Chairman of Presidency Group of Institutions. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, sir. And we also have uh, Mr. Shripal Jain, founder of uh, K2 Learning. Welcome to the show, Shripal. Thank you so much. And myself, Kamal, uh, who is also part of the panel. I would also in- like to introduce my host, uh, Mr. Ash. Ash, I am handing over to you. So, I will be starting with you, sir. First of all, thank you so much and congratulations for this podcast. I think it's a great initiative. And thanks to Suhail. In fact, uh, we have got multiple memories uh, from last 10 years we have been uh, you know uh, associated and in fact uh, from a career perspective we both almost started the same way you know uh, once you started getting into the university and the college and that's the time when K2 Learning also started so very happy to share uh, some of the uh, you know good uh, I would not say achievements but yeah good milestones what we have done so far uh, uh, in fact, we were just laughing just before this that uh, he remembers that I used to come by auto when I used to come and meet him, you know, and uh, uh, today God has been kind enough uh, that uh, it is not difficult for me to afford any kind of car with which I want to come here today. So I would say uh, uh, it, it is a story from, I would say, uh, zero to almost wanting to becoming a hero now, you know, so that's the journey so far now. So to give you a little background, uh, by profession, uh, I'm a chartered accountant, but though uh, in the book which I've authored, I've told that I'm a CA by mistake. I never wanted to be. Otherwise, been a passionate teacher, been an author, been a writer. Uh, you know, have done multiple uh, initiative in education space. Uh, today, uh, as as a group, uh, you know, we do multiple things in education. We have our own schools and colleges. We have our coaching institutes. Uh, we organize large scale events. Uh, one of them is Career Utsav and uh, the Education Growth Summit. And also, we have a wing where we keep investing in education startups. So these are the different things what we do. So I have come from Salem and it has been a great journey so far. So that's a quick uh, brief introduction about us. Thank you. That was a great uh, introduction, Nashripal. So I, I would like to know more about your non-CA kind of a journey. Sure. Okay. Uh, during our initial interaction, you said you also have a lot of education initiatives. Okay. More into the K-12 to segments. Okay. So is it the normal way of how the academics runs or all your schools which you run across the country is into a different academic screen of things interestingly uh, you know one of our recent initiative uh, we have set up something called as the academic city okay so we have two campuses now one at uh, bangalore which is at nel mangla and the other one we just inaugurated last month which is at indore now the the differentiating factor if you look at our boarding schools what we have is something like these you know one we have set up a gogra within the campus so we have cows you know and so the entire milk requirement for the students and the people who stay there we produce there all the vegetables are grown within the campus and the students are involved in growing those vegetables also otherwise if you look at today's generation kids they think uh, vegetables come from amazon they don't even know that you know <laughs> so it comes from uh, you know so much of hard work of the farmers and all of that right so, so it's an academic rigor school. We are not a lifestyle school, though we may have all the premium amenities what may be required, right? From a swimming pool to a sports complex, all this is basic necessity. But uh, we believe in uh, something called as sanskar se safalta tak. So we believe safalta is important. At the same time, sanskar also is equally important, you know. So it's a fully residential, fully integrated CBSE school focusing on the academic rigor. That's the setup what we have done currently with two campuses. These are my new ones. That's what I mentioned to you now little old school of curriculum kind of a thing yes, where you learn everything every trade secret and everything at our school if a elderly person is passing by and if our kids though we are an international school you know with all the cambridge affiliation and the cbc affiliation but our kids may not hesitate to touch elderly person's feet if they see some elderly person walking by there you know so that's what we call it sanskar you know or or if I talk about uh, you know uh, the the kind of rituals what we follow, which kind of imbibes the basic culture of our uh, you know of our country is not compromised at all. You know, so uh, though we understand education is important, but I think being a great human being is more important than just being educated. You know, that's what I think we have been uh, you know working towards in our school as well. That's that's great to know that the roots are still being uh, affirmed and very strong with the kids. Uh, in the upcoming generation which is basically very important now on a personal uh, one i would like to know that okay you said ca by mistake uh, so 
even by see this is a very common question when i interact with kids uh, especially when i go to schools at 11th standard 12th standard okay. i ask how many of you had chosen a commerce out of your interest and how many of you didn't have an option through any other branches to choose commerce sure. i always get 40% who say that i didn't like commerce but i didn't have an option because my mama said or uncle said my brother said that you have to choose commerce uh so those kind of in generation when you go and ask them what beyond commerce except for bcom they don't know anything right. so you know keeping that as a context i would like to understand yeah. see i mean doing completing a ca is not an easy task even if it is by mistake uh, so i would like to know your journey especially right from your uh, sure. pre university to how you completed your ca sure yeah uh in fact uh, suhail and i have discussed this uh, story in our initial days you know so so i hail from tamil nadu uh, you know a place called selam you know which is very famous for steel and uh, you know in fact i am from a tamil medium school uh, i still remember i learnt my abcd in class 8 before which i did not know what abcd is all about right and i still remember the very first day when i had moved from selam to bangalore for my first puc uh, if somebody tells me hi in english those days i used to sweat you know i never knew how to tell them hello you know i i remember i ran out of the college very first day because because if i speak in english their girls used to laugh at me you know i was almost in depression you know so that they why should not laugh at you <laughs> anybody would uh, laugh at me you know whether it is my talking style or whether it is my dressing style or whether the way i my body language all that was you know i was very inferior at that point in time you know and uh, uh, i almost had multiple thoughts should i really run away from here go back to selam i can't survive here the culture is very different here you know so so i i i still remember three nights i could not sleep so hell once uh, you know i saw uh, though in bangalore culture it may be normal a guy and a girl hugging in the college you know i had never seen in my life you know which was very normal here you know but that that uh, i was like acha aisa bhi hota hai kind of a thing you know so i'm talking about 20 years back you know that was you know too much for me to digest as well right now so coming back to your question uh, why commerce and why ca obviously my marks were bad and nobody would give me science that point in time so i got into commerce to uh, my family could not afford uh, education so i'm not a graduate i didn't do my bcom because uh, it was expensive that point in time and i could not afford to uh, pay the fees for bcom ca was one of the cheapest course available so i remember my cost for registration was about 1500 rupees and that was sponsored by one of my uncles and uh, that's how i got into this i realized that uh, yeah uh, though it may be difficult but uh, i don't have a choice you know i'll have to get into this Now the reason I told you I did by mistake is because uh, I was a poet. I used to write poems and uh, in Hindi, you know. And uh, uh, one of my uncles told, "Beta, kavitaon se pet nahi bharega." मतलब you know you will not be able to survive with uh, uh, you know. And that's when he told that you should probably take up this. And yeah, it happened. Uh, so till the time I finished my CA, I was still hoping that if I get a chance, if I can become a poet. But then yeah, so now I don't do anything what a CA does. I don't practice. I've given up my COP now. I'm an educationist now. So yeah, the, but the journey, but but this qualification CA has earned me a lot of respect. You know, say for example, when I go to any institution, you know, the moment they know that I'm a CA. they at least start assuming that i'm intelligent you know so <laughs> you know so that that has been you know or 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 instead of my visiting card if i give a book which i've authored they again you know they look at me in a different way they look at me as an academician they look at me more not like a sales person but more like a you know academician you know that's the advantage what i had so yeah so uh, ca happened but uh, i think given a choice i'd have definitely been a poet that is what i would uh, you know love to do uh, so so my question is to you so nowadays almost everyone like uh, in this generation they have a dream to become a business partner with their friend and build some empire together so you and mr sripal are like a close friend Uh, so would you like to describe how was the journey of becoming a uh, like business partner and how is it going on i would like to say our association started uh, almost 10 years back i think uh, when um, uh, sripal approached me for his uh, one of the event Correct. called career utsav actually so he had planned career utsav with the uh, minimum blueprint which he came uh, to me on almost 8 years back 9 years 10 years 10 years, years yeah. back yeah. so what happened is uh, i told sripal only one thing this is your idea but i'll put my idea in the, your blueprint absolutely uh, i'll i will plan according to my style customization because i'm going to sponsor your go, go, event i'll do according to my style he asked me what is your style 
I said uh, presidency uh, institution should come the branding has to go in all the colleges because he goes to all the colleges right so i told him please put a kiosk in every college i will not name the colleges but like top 10 <laughs> colleges i named him i told him you have to put your stall naming presidency college uh, or a uh, no presence presidency group presence Correct. which actually he did it <laughs> and i was very impressed with his uh, plan actually absolutely and uh, some of the uh, you know uh, the management called sri palan told how can you do this like how can presidency come to our college to as a stall so they were a little surprised and i was very very happy and plus uh, uh, those days i think sri palan now it's all online he had a booklet what after plus 12 so there also uh, there also a presidency name was there so that was given to all the students in the colleges still there you know some of the like uh, still what happened is like again management told how can you giving books also but sri palan made possible this is what i liked about sri palan something very different and he started 10 years back and today karo so is a very big brand today and uh, for till last year we are participating and sri pal i think last one year i think he was uh, busy investing uh, you know in other institutions uh, other uh, other you know his own institutions also so again is go- going to you know get this year i think uh, yeah, also is back yeah. is i mean two cities and wish you all the best sri pal thank you so much and uh, i think i can say that uh, what i have understood about sri pal is the dedication sir dedication is very good discipline dedication and the interpersonal uh, interpersonal skills but what happens is see today we all uh, like you know don't have time to you know uh, but what sri pal uh, the thing is he you know uh, makes time talks to all the top managements of uh, most of the management institutions in bangalore i don't know it's very difficult <laughs> like you know to give time to almost 80 to 100 colleges i think yeah. no higher education of and course. universities also of course so that's what i like about him and uh, he is very uh, low pro- what is that called uh, maintain uh, low maintain low profile and uh, he doesn't get angry at all <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So all all those things which I want to tell you, and uh, uh, and we also share uh, a lot of uh, like you know uh, we you know we go for fun lunch time. sometimes, fun time and and all those things. So we you know kind of uh, it's a long journey last absolutely ten years. Yes, absolutely. And Kamal sir also like you know uh, also a friend like I can say. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Nice. You know, and nice to work with Kamal sir. I uh, definitely and uh, it is uh, really great. So sir like you are a vice chairman of presidency group of institution uh, which is one of the biggest institution in India. And so I would like to call you edupreneur instead of entrepreneur. And when it comes to entrepreneurship so what we learn in class and when we become entrepreneur what we do are very different things. So do you think entrepreneurship can be taught in classroom and learned in classroom again if i say last 10 uh, uh, years like you know if i'm saying the education system how it has been evolved you know from recent times initially we had this uh, the i think the process of in, a, in a every institution called employability skills correct, correct? so now i think uh, recently we all have changed you know i think in the, the education uh, uh, industry itself now it's not not employability skills now it is entrepreneur skills how do be a, be entrepreneur and today it's startup world we need to uh, you know be like entrepreneurs means there are a lot of qualities are there okay. i think it's uh, so we have developed in our institution we develop those qualities and not only in terms of entrepreneurship even technical point of view also we have got uh, digital marketing we got data analytics which is uh, again technical then we got for bc we got full stack mm-hmm. uh, then uh, we and apart from that we have got uh, industry experts who comes and we have hired a company called kpmg to do our uh, you know the support to our mba also so we have taken the best in the industry also for collaboration so this is how we actually evolve the students to be a uh, entrepreneurship uh, entrepreneurs are those people uh, th- this again how i define this as right entrepreneurs are those people who live 3 years of their life like nobody else lives so that they can live the rest of their whole life like nobody can even think of living <laughs> you know so so 3 years would be struggle you know in in our community they say hazar din de do 1000 days to any business focus and do not give up you know for the first 3 years and once the 3 years passes by then the rest of your own life you are your own boss and you can do whatever you want to do so i think uh, my advice to any student listening to this would be 
uh, if you have decided to get into this ship then have patience for at least three years come what may there would be ups and downs there would be struggle there would be multiple times which will come to your mind no this is a wrong decision i've taken uh, you may have to beg borrow steal money sometimes to ensure that you live up to the commitments what you've given sometimes but live with it for some time things once it sails through it will be a great journey after that oh shibal that that's such a fabulous way of putting across uh, it's always said uh, 90 days to get certain thing practice on a on an entrepreneurial venture it's basically 3 3 3 and a half years is what they generally say Absolutely. in terms of setting up and then the ship sails on their own or else it doesn't become entrepreneurship it becomes entrepreneurship that's it <laughs> okay all right and so i have one specific question since we were talking about entrepreneurship you said uh, okay you all were, uh, you all so uh, invest in terms of uh, uh, people who are into the education space Now I I would like to keep this podcast as an opportunity to upcoming entrepreneurs to see that if somebody wants to put across their ideas sure. in the space of education on a startup sure. kind of a thing. So what kind of things you look at in terms of uh, a kids or in any organization you wanted to invest or any specific areas which you wanted to have it will be useful for a lot of kids who wanted to get into that okay. one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> So so as a group uh, we keep looking at opportunities uh, of such business ideas which are scalable and saleable uh, when i say scalable if the dependency is not very high on the promoter you know and it can be a uh, process driven than people driven you know so those are businesses which can be scaled up correct so for us we always keep looking at opportunities which are scalable and which can derive some value so if you are solving a real time problem and that can be scaled up then such are the businesses what we would want to invest this is point 1 point 2 since we've been doing only three things in last 15 years you know only three things we have done uh, you know the first thing we have done is focus on education the second thing we have done is the focus on education and the third thing also happens to be the focus on education you know so as a policy we invest only and only in education businesses we don't understand other verticals at all you know so so once we invest along with money we also bring in a lot of network and strategy which helps these startups to grow so what happens money is one component which is important but at the same time helping these startups with the because people say today your net work is your net worth correct more the people you know that's the way how the businesses get cracked so financial investors we become strategic investors so along with money we bring all the network and strategies to help them grow we have done five six so far and two of them we got a good exit as well so we keep looking at opportunities so if anything comes up i'll be happy to share the email id you can definitely share it with us and we can look it forward as an entrepreneur we need to have three very important skills as you said one is network and one is innovation and c is collaboration Absolutely. So these three things are very important in today's uh, thing, and if you want to be different from others and extraordinary, these three things are very important. How different you are from others is innovation, and networking is very important. <coughs> India, everybody is promoting entrepreneurship. Our government is promoting entrepreneurship because at in at least to young people, because they are young, they have risk taking capabilities. But the question of youngsters, like suppose I am young, but if I go in entrepreneurship, I have to give my twenty four by seven. but at the same time at their young age they will lose the fun they will lose the parties they can do they can they can't roam around their friends so like what is your opinion in this sure so uh, my advice to such things would be one you have to prioritize what is more important for us at the same time if you can convert your passion into profession then you will not feel like working you will start enjoying that correct but when i say it is not that you can't party when you are becoming an entrepreneur you can still do that you know you can uh, figure out an element and that's very important uh, you know all work and no play will make you a dull boy actually as we say right so you will definitely have to have a uh, entertainment but if you can find that entertainment within the profession what you're doing i think uh, you know that's the uh, code what you have to crack like uh, the the example which i could quote is being a teacher being an author i organize career utsav which is still a event business as such but you know but if you look at it gives a different kick all together you know that's the uh, so which started as a small idea where, where i also definitely there's a small definitely a credit to sohel also in ideating this in the initial days you know but today it is considered to be one of the largest education event and i get a kick by doing this actually matlab you know so so the idea here is one can you make your passion into a profession and then bring a business to it actually so that you will start enjoying more at the same time you don't have to work 24/7 for sure you know for 
few reasons reason number 1 do not do not bark if you can hire a dog that's a quote you know so what what i mean to say is get right people for the right job correct you know and uh, uh, it is not all the hard work it's all about smart work many a times you know so after a certain level i think best of the ceos in the world play golf they don't sit and work <laughs> correct you know <laughs> and uh, so so what happens is uh, you know you get an idea you get the right work you have people to execute this right so so those are the things what uh, i agree that you can't do it from day one you know you'll have to slog that initial 2 3 years that's a 3 years focus and after 3 years i think you have to graduate from doing all by yourself than uh, you know to getting it done from people and i think that is a transition which is important so you should fun you should have fun you should enjoy you should love what you're doing and then the results would come out actually uh, i can i can understand that this generation today is not blaming them uh, but i'm telling that uh, when they work they completely work when they enjoy they completely enjoy there there's no uh, balancing uh, thing because what happens is sometimes they tend to think too much like you know okay like if they want to work they think too much you know they are, have to achieve this i feel when you can work with uh, like minded people first first is the like minded people when you work with uh, the people whom you like first i think uh, your uh, uh, what your barrier will break there and once you uh, uh, start working then you like uh, to work after that then automatically what will happen is your uh, uh, you know your fun time will be all automatically balanced so that's where i feel uh, you you should as uh, in the beginning what say palto milestone milestone is very important plan the milestone accordingly where you uh, don't have to create a milestone where you have to work all 365 days yeah, yeah. so you can create a milestone where you have to balance your uh, enjoyment also and balance your work also but doesn't mean that only you work and no enjoyment it has to be balanced sir there is a quote called discipline makes you consistent and consistency makes your habit and your habits makes you rich so i would like to decode your habits which our viewers can implement in their life and become rich we want to see our students being rich <laughs> and we want to see our generation growing i think kripal wants to be rich means you can ask him <laughs> <laughs> as yeah. an entrepreneur that is as that education you know in in yeah. fact um, uh, being rich is a is a very subjective statement you know so even ambani feels that he has to achieve a lot yet matlab you know so that's the that's the uh, you know thing so in my opinion uh, yes as you rightly said uh, discipline is very important your uh, habits what you choose is very very important the kind of uh you know uh, network or the kind of circle whom you associate with is definitely equally important so so if you if you balance your life in a way that 9 uh, hours focus on work 8 hours good sleep you should take no doubt about it and the remaining 7 to 8 hours for all other personal commitments it could be your uh, health it could be for your uh, you know so balancing all this is very important so in my opinion if you're not giving at least 60 to 90 minutes every day to your health then i think you're doing injustice to to yourself you know the only place uh, where you live is in your body and if that is not taken care i think that is the you know so that's the mistake what uh, you know people end up doing you know so take care of your health invest as much as possible on your intellectual capabilities you know so try to do some course try to keep attending some sessions workshops uh, meet people so so these seven eight hours which i'm talking about it has to be spent on health it has to be spent on growing more intellectually that has to be spent on building more network these are indirect things which will bring you better efficiency in the work when you do it so these nine hours of uh, focused work when you do i think these three things parallel done your physical fitness your mental fitness and your network will help you to grow better i think these three elements if added in the uh, day to day activities will be of great help in every entrepreneur's journey one of the biggest problem is as uh, uh, so it's also also saying that they get predominantly either work 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 or becomes only enjoy 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 so i always tell uh, the people that uh, where i have worked a lot in startups mm. and i've seen bosses who becomes a pun at 6 o'clock in the morning <laughs> open the shutter set up the tables clean the tables so that the team can come and start working at 8 o'clock and close the office at 11 o'clock in the night mm. i've been with them for 5 and of years in a bangalore based startup i've mm. seen them from i was i was the fifth employee of the organization mm. okay and i was the oldest in, among them so i said i don't mind doing it but the current generation with a lot of people working and you ask them to move a table they said it's not my job i said if you wanted to get into an entrepreneurship as in you have to do everything you should know everything so that's a trade secret of being an entrepreneur 
you should know how a pune works how an office boy works how a watchman is then only you will know what to be done what not to be done so, uh, i always advise anybody who wanted to become an entrepreneur boss don't get into that mindset i'm the boss of the organization it's not for you to become a boss of the organization you should start being a watchman to become a boss all right so i i always I, i'm not a great reader but i've read this somewhere saying that how uh, uh, mr narayana murthy in his venture has developed the people because he has worked in terms of various roles in the organization and then he has built person into that particular fitted up person into that particular role and they have been there for ages in infosys so that's one thing where i have heard about i have seen the bosses with whom i have worked in startups okay i've i've been into competitive spot market especially in that startup segment kind of a thing they have worked like anything so i i've see he goes for a seminar in the morning comes back from the seminar sits in an academic meeting goes back home he was newly married and he used to sit down the whole night and prepare content for the materials come back review it next day morning with academic team so i've hardly seen him sleep but the thing is once once he grow the system from what we had about two centers when i came out we had 75 centers and and it was completely so he always says one thing kamal for me as an entrepreneur and he was not somebody who jumped at the age of 21 22 to become an entrepreneur he always says i failed in my uh, 12th standard wrote my examination got into uh, an engineering college near hasan okay uh, finished up there and then somebody said boss at this percentage you will not get a job you go and write gate examination <laughs> so he went and wrote a gate examination and he always says till now i don't understand kamar how i secured all india rank 1 oh. he then after his iisc he started working in one of the biggest multinational corporation at a very very handful package mm. one fine day he quit his job and started his entrepreneurial journey right and i have uh, so the effort which he has put in there are two people one came from a very lucrative marine job they don't hesitate to do anything but right now what i have seen them is they have grown they sold their companies after stabilizing for 7 8 years okay so he he always says that if you wanted to become an entrepreneur ready to give up everything yeah, so after i became vice chairman i think my dad st- remember still telling you know i think few years back or uh, 10 years back saying that you are you are vice chairman but you are also an employee like others of course, of course. you know you should not uh, as a vice chairman you can't you know uh, dominate them your employees but you are you are uh, you know you are employee and treat everyone equally that is what he has told in fact there is yeah. a quote which says if you have to become a great employer then you should first become a great employee okay only then you know the pain what an employee goes through you will understand them better so you will be able to take care of them better you know and any organization cannot grow without people so people are the key especially in education space where we are you know so it's all it's all people uh, you know centric uh, you know thing what we do i think yeah so people are the key for any business and uh, i think that's what uh, has been a great thought what yes. chairman sir would have probably you know passed on yes. to uh, suhail as well so yeah i think it has been a fantastic thing suhail yeah great journey for you also <laughs> definitely yeah so there is a famous dialogue of sarukh khan jo log kuch nahi karte wo kamal karte hain so and we have also seen most of the entrepreneurs were a backbencher at some point of time so what do you think what was what is the reason behind that yeah so what happens is people who are too much focused on marks you know they they are, they are people who fear the most unko lagta hai sirf marks lena hi important hai which may not be true so what happens is people who are backbenchers they know hum kuch to kar lenge life mein you know uh, they are called people in our country we say jugad you know so they know you know so if you look at most of the bank backbenchers they hire the first benchers you know <laughs> that's what it has happened you know i, I, I love the way you said it the reason why i laugh is i always say it in a science and commerce group i said no, today's scenario everybody wanted to study stem Correct. science technology engineering management But please keep in mind don't think that bcom is a very least preferred program Correct. at the end of the day and the end of the month you have to go and stand in front of a commerce guy for your accounts to be cleared for a salary to be paid yeah, yeah, yeah. and he is the guy who, who who helps you after every 11 months to sit down and work on your it filings and other things 
so commerce is not an easy job commerce is one of the toughest one to work and as an engineer you can work only in one particular segment as a commerce you can work in all the nine verticals of the industry okay and you can work in any levels on the, as a commerce graduate uh, same thing applies for economics which i always keep saying that economics is another uh, backbone of the country but unfortunately in the hype economics was sidelined like anything so uh, this this I, since you come from salem uh, shripal this is something an article which i read in times of india in 2019 Mm-hmm. there is a school in namakkal from there about uh, 55 students were selected for uh, sri ram college of commerce they got admissions because they all had fantastic and you know namakkal how it is yeah. and then later on why the article came is not because this many students went there the guy said they had only book knowledge yeah. no practical no practical exposure yeah. so that's when when i start digging onto that My famous question when I go to a commerce student is that you all studied a profit and loss statement in your so tomorrow you become a finance manager you go into an organization somebody comes up and says I'm going on a travel I would like to have ten thousand rupees as an advance what you do you give ten thousand advance with a voucher he goes back on the tour goes to the tour comes back and says that I've spent ten thousand rupees nine thousand का bill is there thousand का bill is not there what do I do Sir, it's very simple. Surplus or miscellaneous account and equal it. Fantastic, fabulous. Now the same guy goes into a trip and comes back and said, "I spent thirteen thousand rupees, but I lost my bag on the way. Nine thousand ka bill gone. Four thousand I have uh, now. Nine thousand me. He says seven thousand bills have gone. Two thousand I have paid through Google Pay and Phone Pay, which I can give you. Four thousand ka other physical bills I have. What will you do?" Sir, we can also write surplus. And how can you write surplus? <laughs> They get stuck over there. Yeah, practical exposure. So practical exposure is not. See, that is where a senior a guy who works into an accounts comes back and says, "Boss, it's simple. There is no workbook saying that I cannot write. But you cannot write a seventy percent of a money as miscellaneous expenses out of your advance. What you need is a bill. The Indian accounting system says I need bills." call that guy no problem this is the voucher <laughs> write the voucher write and signature it katam i said this is where a practical exposure to a theoretical difference is yeah okay so in that level is what i asked the reason why i asked people why this i said as an example is that you said you run this international school in bangalore and indo uh, with more like a gurukulam kind of a structure with cambridge as the affiliation, affiliation. or the content i will put it on that way basically i am not somebody asking at a 4 5 5 standard kind of a thing i'm asking a little on the higher standard grade 8 and above sure. in terms of what is a practical exposure rather than being only a knowledgeable sure. theory site so uh, so as i mentioned um, we are a we are a regular cbse school but with the focus on a b c d e f now what is this a b c d e f these six letters they represent the six most sought after professional careers in our country okay say for example a as an architect or a designer you know the kids who want to appear for nata nift nid to get into design schools or architecture colleges in our definition is a yani architecture and design b as in barrister or a businessman correct a lawyer or a business person entrepreneurship right c as a chartered accountant the finance guy right d as a doctor okay e as an engineer and f as a foreign studies so if you look at our country the aspiration for this a b c d e f is very very high so what we have done is we have identified the best brands in the country who are number 1 for example if i talk about uh, engineering in medicine allen from kota is considered to be the largest player in the country so we have onboarded them so the faculty from allen lives in our campus so the teacher who is teaching physics at the class in the morning is also playing football in the evening with the same student so the comfort is very very high so the academic outcome is very very different you know and these children are away from mobile phones so the productivity automatically increases you know once the mobile phone or the television or the internet is not there you know so we have seen best of the kids well many times they don't perform because of distractions in life correct, correct you know and these distractions are away so we have produced fantastic results uh, you know in fact our uh, academic city first year results the average was much better than what 
the best centers of allen has done across the country okay so that's the kind of results what we have produced so so i think it's all about the culture what you set up the kind of ecosystem what you bring in there the kind of uh, resources what we deploy and with a clear vision if you do i think the results are uh, you know for sure in fact we are very soon launching two more campuses of academic city uh, you know we are at the term sheet level so i'll be happy to share uh, you know to, uh, one in north and one in south so we are looking one in coimbatore and one in ahmedabad so these are the two cities what we are uh, looking at yeah so i think it was fantastic meeting you yash and uh, Thanks Sohel for having us here and thank think it was uh, coming, <laughs> thank you so much thank you Kamal sir it was a uh, pleasure interacting yeah so over to you thank you so much so that was the very insightful podcast thank you all of you for being here so this is your host Yashopadya signing off